in this session I'm going to talk about internet communication because some of the principles from what we discussed in terms of technical communication is slightly different so I'm going to uh, talk about internet communication um, but it's important to know that I'm still talking about uh, emails which are exchanged in a technical um, context right I still am not talking about you know business letters or emails or invoices or you know exploratory mails I'm not talking about them I still am talking about technical mails and in what context you will write and how they should be written and what are the general uh, rules and things like that okay now there is huge amount of type of internet communication that happens okay many of you might be very active in social networking sites Facebook Twitter WhatsApp okay, so that is one and many of you might go look up information like Wikipedia things like that and some of you might be writing blogs or might be reading blogs and then you write emails okay in the order of importance I think email is something that everybody does and probably then there is uh, uh, social networking but very few people use it for technical context so I have put it at the bottom even though I think it will be a very nice exercise for those of you who are doing a PhD or who have done a PhD or who have written a paper to see if within 140 letters you can communicate what is it that you have done okay there was recently some in Twitter there was a competition right 140 letters you have to tell a short story and somebody got a prize okay so you can think of it I mean this is probably the biggest challenge that you can take for yourself you have a thesis typically running into hundreds of pages in one tweet can I say what the thesis is about okay that is the essence of communication and uh, of course people cheat even when I tweet if it is more than that I slice it and post it as a answer to the same tweet and things like that so we all do maybe five tweets it takes to say something which is one piece of information but but blogs and Wikipedia are very commonly used and very widely used for communication and in fact I had written a paper with one of my co-authors whom I never met I met him two years after the paper got published all the interaction happened through wiki so he used to write I used to correct I used to give questions he used to answer and there are wiki pages which will allow this latex type of marking because our work is very equation heavy so we even did everything editing the equations the questions you know my advisor was also involved so two three of us in different cities my advisor was in Bangalore the student was in Madras I was in Chicago and we wrote this paper together we published it after a couple of years of publication I met the author so today it is possible for you to interact with collaborators who could be in any corner right I have collaborators with whom I am writing papers but they are sitting in Taiwan and US and Europe okay and it is also more common these days for example there is a national resource center for materials in IASC Bangalore and they have collaborators from all over this country wherever metallurgy material science is being taught those professors can come interact with them their students can come do experiments go back and then they will collaborate over long distance so in this day and age then this kind of communication mediums are used very extensively and it should be used otherwise what is the purpose okay so after all all the internet came up you know why anybody know why internet came up which technical information physics, physics. Huh, which physics huh? no not defense so I think it is some high energy physics experiments where they were generating large amounts of data which they wanted to analyze and so they started sending and that is how it started so so all this is for 
CERN, uh, some, some such lab. I don't remember exactly, but yes, some such lab. Uh, at defense, some people say because some funding was also from, I think, DARPA. But in any case, so it is for sharing information that this entire exercise started. Of course, we share lots of information. Some of it is social, some of it is technical, and mostly you will see blogs and Wikipedia. There are lots of technical content. I haven't seen too much in Twitter, but I think this workshop should start that revolution. There is a strong scientific community in India which uh, tweets, okay? So that will be nice to have. And emails is something that everybody writes. So I'm going to concentrate mostly on emails. I will not concentrate on others. But in the online version and in the other session in December, we might have some exercises there too, because there will be writing exercises. Okay, so again, this is what I think. You should disagree, you might disagree, and uh, I, I don't have a problem with that, okay? Um, even with people who have like-minded this thing, we all don't agree all the time, so it's okay. But this is some things that I think, and, uh, and, and you don't take it just because I said so. You, you decide um, how you will do it. The first thing is, it is preferable to have your email ID as your name, okay? Nicknames as email IDs is not very professional. Okay. Now, I know that some email software will suggest you that you can put some numbers with your names and things like that. As much as possible, you should avoid it. If you are writing a technical mail, a professional mail, it should go from your name. Right? I have my full name. That is how your email ID should be, as much as possible. I know that some common names are there where you can't, but there are always initials, there are always these ways of dot .mp. There must be thousands of Guru Rajans, I know. Okay, So I can't, I'm not going to get Guru Rajan. But I can make it still very specific and very perfect, right? No nicknames, no names with multiple meanings, um, no funny names, no numbers as much as possible. At least you have the choice of doing it with your official email. Okay, Maybe Yahoo and Google does not give you, but official email you can always have, unless there are policies. I know that there are places where the policy is only the initials and things like that. Uh, but even if it is, you should talk to your administrator and tell them that this is not very professional. Professional is to have proper name in your email ID. So it is preferable. As much as possible, you should use so why do we write emails? Of course, for the same reason why we do anything related to communication. You want to get information. You want to communicate information. You want to collaborate. You want to resolve disputes. Okay. You want to complain. You are very unhappy with what happened. You traveled by air and then uh, there was your baggage didn't arrive properly or something. You checked in, it was broken or you sent a courier and the courier hasn't reached, it's one week, so you will write a mail, okay? And uh, so, sometimes it happens that somebody has written a complaint. Somebody is asking you why this happened, okay? Student has written to the dean that, you know, he didn't give me a proper exam or he didn't correct it properly or I deserve 80 marks, he has given only 40 marks. You may have to explain. But please remember, there are many things that you can say person to person which we cannot write down in an email. Not because there is anything wrong with it. I'm not saying you are not writing it because it's okay to say because there is no record unless somebody is recording. Simply because when you say things, the communication happens not just with what you say but with your body language and with your gestures and how the person perceives. You know, even if I start saying something, if I perceive that the person is not taking it in this fashion, I will change it and I will change it instantaneously. That is not possible when you have sent a mail. Somebody reads the mail. How, in what tone that person is going to read the mail is something over which you have no control. So you have to assume that the person is going to read in whichever tone he or she wants, and in whatever tone they read, it doesn't sound, you know, arrogant or complaining or, you know, demeaning. 
Now, how do we do this? We do this by putting markers. You might not say please and thank you when you talk, but in emails, please use them frequently. Never sign off a mail without regards or greetings or best wishes. If you are addressing somebody, always try to address with the maximum possible respect. You, you want to address somebody, you want to send a mail, you do not know whether so and so is a miss or a doctor, use doctor. It is okay for them to say that I am not doctor, call me miss. But if they are doctor and if you have called miss, that is a problem. If you want to call somebody professor, please call professor. Let them say that I am not a professor, call me doctor. Okay. Not even your students, unless you are familiar, address them without Mr. or Miss. Okay. Even in classes, sometimes if I am very angry, I always address my students as Sir or Madam. Okay. To say that I do not have anger against the person, but against the action. But these kind of markers are extremely important when you do not have a control over how the person is going to read the mail, what tone they are going to use. What mood they are in, I mean, the same line might mean different to that person depending on when and how they are reading. Okay. So, it is very, very important that when you write all this, if you are writing, for example, to get information, first line should be, I am writing this mail to get this information. That would be very clear if I go and, and knock on somebody's door and I am going to ask some information, I, my tone and my way will tell them that I am going to ask for information. I am asking for help, I am making a request. But that might not how it will sound when you send a mail. I have seen n number of students making this mistake. I am sure that when they are reading the mail in their minds, they are reading with a tone which is very polite. But when I am reading that mail, I am not reading it with very polite tone for whatever reason. Okay? Then that affects. Okay? So you should know like your uh, technical thing, or what is it uh, that question I am asking. When you are writing mail also, you should be clear as to why you are writing the mail. That should be the first line of your mail. Thank you very much for your mail. I am answering to this query. I am writing this mail to complain against, complain against this, this, this thing that happened on such and such time. Okay. Also, so there are, there are more things of this type. So in, in other words, a good email has lots of markers and apostrophes, commas, colons and whatever uh, markers which will also tell about the tone. Okay. So, so you should use them uh, as extensively as possible. And this is the format of emails, all of you have written emails I know, but still sometimes people have a tendency to send a mail without subject. Okay. You should not do. People have a tendency to write just hi and then mails. Should not do. People have a tendency to mail 10 people at the same time where the information is irrelevant. You should not do. People have a tendency to reply in a group for a mail for which they are answering to a specific person to the entire group. You should not do. Okay, so there are lots of things that you should not do. Simply because you are writing it in a professional technical context. Okay. Now, first is subject. There should always be a subject and it should be as pithy as possible. It should be as directed as possible. And all of you have this experience. Probably you, you, know, you are away for half a day, come back, open the email. There are 150 emails. Most of them are of course trying to sell me some scent or something. But there are also some 15 mails in between, some of them from the dean, some of them the students and some of them are very urgent because the student has suddenly realized that he or she needs a recommendation letter by this evening. Now, when I come and look at the mails, I am also trying to scan and decide which ones are important. Of course, first you take all these promotion mails, so junk them and then look at the remaining mails. And then if there is a mail from dean and if there is a mail from student, I am going to read the dean's mail, assuming that it is important. It might not be that important. That I would know provided in your subject you have written that uh, request for recommendation letter urgent or something like that. So you should always write and also you should not abuse subject. Okay? When it is not urgent, please do not write urgent. Okay? And next should be the address. Like I said, you should always address as politely as possible. 
it is okay to call somebody who is not a professor as professor than to call somebody as doctor. Similarly, it is always better to call somebody as doctor than to call somebody as mister. Okay? So, depending on the context, please use the maximum greeting that is available for you. Then, this is slightly American, this is not uh, common. So, when I write mails, so I write, dear, okay, so professor Sundar, do you put a comma or do you put a colon? Americans use colon and generally we are used to writing comma. What is the difference? Why should you put a colon? Okay, so it is just a marker. Suppose if you are very busy, I am walking into your office, I want to talk to you. I will call your name, I will wait for some time. Okay, if I have more, if I want to show more respect, I will wait for longer till the person's attention comes back to whatever I am asking for. So, colon basically tells that you are being extra polite. Okay, it is okay to call Suntar, this is what I want. But if I know that Suntar is very busy, I do not know when the mail reaches him, maybe it reaches him when he is really busy, then I call Suntar, then I wait. Only when Suntar gives his attention to me, I am going to say. Now, the, the colon that you put basically tells that you are addressing the person and you want to give a long pause. The long pause is basically to indicate that, okay, so I am, I am giving a pause so that you can give your attention to me. So, again, this is a marker. This is not just some random put comma, put colon. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is that? I do not know. So, you should not do. That is what I am telling. In, you know, I, if I write a mail to my friend, that is okay. No, no, no. If you are writing mails, please do write as much of punctuation as possible. Like somebody noticed with Subramanian Chandrasekhar's writing this morning, punctuation is what basically tells a person how to read something. Okay, especially when you want to convey tones, punctuations are the best way of conveying tones. And of course, there is also the error of using more punctuation than necessary in this internet communication. There are, for example, emoticons. And when you are using emoticons, each one has a meaning. And some of them are not to be used in professional context. Okay, people tend to use it indiscriminately. For example, there is a smiley face. There is a smiley face. This just means a smile. But there is this, which also means that you are... So, you should not write this uh, winking uh, emoticon when you are writing a professional mail, but people have a tendency, you know, they think that this is smiley face. It is not, this is the smiley face. So, now if you do not know, please do not use it. If you are using it, go look up, there are lots of dictionaries which will tell you which means what and some of them are not meant for communicating with your students or with your colleagues or with your superiors. Again, I mean, I know this because students write. They send mails like this. I am sure they do not mean to wink at me. <laughs> okay? But they do not realize. Okay. Yes, sir. As ma'am pointed out, nowadays in modern business communication, we are advised to use open in punctuation. Right. Uh, that that means... is business communication. In yes, technical sir. communication, please do not do. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> okay. Businesses are becoming more friendly, maybe. But the technical people are very, very conservative. Okay, so for for whatever reason, there, there are also there are cultural differences. You know, uh, uh, I I have heard this from somebody. Technical communication is always oriented towards business communication. If it becomes like that, that is very unfortunate. But technical should not be business. Huh? Yes, sir. Open letter format. Uh, uh, nowadays, there are two uh, two letter writing types. One is a uh, closed type and open type. Right. And when we come under open type, sorry, closed type, uh, it's supposed not to use uh, punctuation mark. I, I it understand. says. So that's what and anonymity also is uh, advising to um, uh, it's called uh, practice I, such letters only. I I understand, but that is business communication. No, 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 no. I'm talking with technical English. Uh, that is communication. Technical communication only. Please don't do technical communication. Even if you are writing email. That is just a, a um, replacement for paper and pen. Uh, please, please do not do. This is my advice. Of course, I am being very conservative. Uh, uh, like I said, I mean, I, I can call just Suntar and with a comma, I can write a mail. I would still put a colon because I am trying to convey 
some information that I cannot convey by just writing. Okay. So because so, of which, please as much as possible use as many of the punctuation marks as possible to communicate what is your tone. Okay. Yes, the punctuations are a necessary part of uh, what we are trying to communicate and more and more necessary when we are communicating uh, in the written uh, medium because they mean the correct pauses and gaps which are not there when we are writing. So, it is uh, open punctuation does not at all mean that we have to do away with the communication, uh, with the punctuation marks. Whatever marks are necessary, they have to be there. Like what this colon means, it has to be there. It, uh, uh, doing away with this mean, means will mean that you know um, uh, writing it in a more casual or uh, uh, less formal way, which yeah. we do not mean. In in a informal communication, I might I, I might be exchanging mails with somebody, uh, either with that person in a, a informal context. Uh, like I mean, f for example, I'll give you another example. I call like I said my advisor by name. I always call him Abhi. But if I am writing a mail from here requesting him to come and give a talk in our department, the letter still goes as the dear Professor Abhinandanan with a colon. I am writing this mail to request you to come and visit us on such and such date and give such and such talk. It is true with him also. He might write a mail to me on some personal thing without even address. Okay, that the mail might start that this, 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 this. But if he is writing a formal invitation to me, he still addresses me as dear Professor Guru Rajan with colon. Okay. Now, this has got nothing to do with who you are writing. So, excuse But the me. context in which you are writing. Okay. The, uh, the example that you gave right now. Now, I just want to ask, is that a part of business communication or it is a part of technical communication? Technical. I, okay. I think it's very difficult to... Bus it. Business is when I say, I will pay you 1000 rupees, can you come and do it for me? I, I write a mail to somebody that I want 1 kilogram of copper billet. Technically, what is the cost? But I am asking Professor Abhinandan to come and give a talk in my seminar. Hmm. Is technical. Please remember, technical has several aspects. There is a social aspect of technical. It doesn't become... Business is for me only when there is a transaction. And it's a business no, transaction. No, no. Okay. okay. So now you might think that buying a copper billet is technical. It is not for me. Because with the person with whom I am buying the copper billet, it's a technical uh, business relationship. But I might write my, to my collaborator in Sweden asking for a cold rolled copper sample. Same information I am asking from both. Can you get me one kilogram billet of copper, one kilogram of uh, wrought copper uh, sample? But to the other person when I write, I will write, dear professor so and so, we are trying to do this experiment. I understand that you produce this, so could you please share a, a billet for us for our experiment. So please remember, it is context dependent. Okay, same thing you are asking. You are asking two different people. One will be considered as business communication, another one will be considered as technical communication. Basically because the guy who sells me billets don't care how I address or how much impatient I am. Okay. But in the other context, it's not so. I'm not looking, that's what I said. I mean, if I write to him as advisor, I might write to dear Abhi because that is my advisor student relationship. But when yeah. I am writing as a faculty member, asking yeah, somebody, sending, say, for example, you are sending a draft copy of your paper right. and asking the comment. Right. There Whether dear, dear is also Abhi. necessary. Huh? Whether dear is also necessary. That depends on how, what kind of relationship you have with your advisor. For yeah. me, I still used to write dear Abhi, this is the latest draft. And thanks, for, thanks, thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. sir yeah. Uh, I, I personally think uh, use of punctuation mark uh, is not about being conservative or being respectful to that addressee. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, uh, we have certain conventions, mm -hmm. and using open punctuation style is mm -hmm. one of the conventions that we normally follow mm -hmm. in our letters. Mm -hmm. In our letters, okay, mm -hmm. that doesn't show this. You know that you are courtesy or that doesn't show disrespect to your address at all. Mm. Okay, the only thing is that you can avoid some of the punctuation marks in the sections like you know that your salutation part or in oh, heading part or or this or the concluding sections of your letter or your formal you know that uh, in, in your formal document just to reduce the 
the, the amount of effort that you put in in that process. Okay, that's okay. what I'm telling. See, it's and a personal as, thing. As, as please please don't reduce the effort. No, as you as might write to an editor. No. You might think that this the is point, open punctuation. Sir, the point I'm trying to tell you. might not how it will be perceived always. No, so the point I'm trying, side, sir, okay? the point I'm trying to tell you that uh -huh. we we cannot uh, we cannot avoid using punctu punctuation mar uh, punctuation marks in the main body of the text, uh, the text main body. No, no, okay, because no, no. change in punctuation mark will I, change the semantic aspect of the, the document. The point I am trying to make is different. In the greetings and when you are signing off, you can save some effort by not putting punctuation marks. It might even be taken in the right spirit that this is just to save some effort, this punctuation is removed. But there is no guarantee that under all circumstances it will be read in that fashion. So if you want to be on the safer side, please use punctuation. No, but, but use okay. a comma. Like I said, this is my personal opinion. You are welcome to try other things. I am not stopping you. But because I am teaching now, this is my opinion. Please use as much punctuation as possible. Open punctuation, keep it out of technical communication. Okay, you don't know how an editor in Sweden perceives your letter. Please, the, nobody is going to take a, a, a class for him as to what open punctuation means. That person was born and brought up in 1945, where sitting in the kitchen from his mother, if he wants to say something, he has to ask with please. Okay, so uh, cultural contexts are different. So please don't, uh, if you are writing technical, be conservative, use as much of punctuation as possible. This is very, very important, in my opinion. You are welcome to write other type of mails if it works for you, all the all the same to you, okay? Sir, uh, punctuation is necessary. Ha. And uh, you, have, you have said that uh, relationship is very important. Right. If I am going to address my friend, hmm. he's very close, hmm. I am meeting after a long time. Right. I think uh, there is no Sir, wrong. Please, I mean, I am not talking anything no, no, other no. than no, technical communication. Yeah, common, uh, uh, common supplementation here. Ha. Uh, if I am going to address my friend, uh, who, is, uh, who I have seen after a long time, I can even use an exclamatory mark. I am not talking about that kind of mail, please. I am not teaching here business writing or letter writing. Okay, you, you write whatever you want to your friend. I am talking in a, in a technical context, okay? I, okay, let me be very clear. I am talking about mails that you write to your students, mails that you write to your colleagues, mails that you write to your superiors, Mails that you write to your collaborators, mails that you write to editorial boards, journals, funding agencies. You know, you can't say you send a mail to DST secretary or some, some official in DST for your project. You can't say this is open punctuation. Please don't do. He, he might even be okay with open punctuation. To be on the safer side, please put all the commas, all the colons and send the letter. Okay? So this is what I mean. Okay. Now, many a times, when you write an email, if you are writing for the first time, you also need to introduce yourself. Now, this first time is a very context-specific thing. Uh, for example, I might write to the dean once, and after three months, I'm, again, I am writing to the dean. The context is different. Say, for example, first time I wrote to the dean as a new faculty member joined the department. After three months, I am writing because I have a problem in the hostel where I am the warden. Please introduce yourself again. Even with the dean, even if you are writing in your capacity as a faculty member, if your second mail is after six months, please introduce yourself. Okay? Because the dean might be getting lots of mails from faculty members. You are one person meeting the dean and you think that the dean knows me. And he might even know you. Okay? But that does not mean that in all contexts, the moment he sees a mail without reading what is the uh, name that you have signed off with, and even then sometimes the dean might not remember who it is. Okay? So depending on the context, I don't want you to introduce yourself for a mail exchange that is happening for the past one week, for example. First time you wrote, I am so and so, I am a faculty member in this department, this is why I am writing and he has written back. You are writing back something and at that time I don't want you to say again that I am so and so writing. Okay, that is okay. But in, suppose you are writing after a long break or you are writing to somebody who you know will get lots of mails of this type or you are writing to the same person in a different context, please introduce yourself. Please say that I am Guru Rajan, I am writing as the warden of this particular hostel regarding this problem. 
okay so the greeting and introducing yourself is also very very important again this is a little bit conservative okay there is a extra sentence about you are introducing yourself if the dean knows who you are guru rajan after that he might want to skip but that option is his or hers i am not going to make that decision as far as i am concerned i am going to write a professional email okay now when you describe the rest of it the body of what you are writing people make the mistake of not splitting it into paragraphs okay that is a big no no we read information by bunching information together so every new thought in your email even if it is one sentence they should all be different paragraphs okay every new thought should be a different paragraph this is very very important suppose you are describing a complex situation you describe what happened you describe what needs to be done you describe what are the ways in which this can be handled so some of them could be quite complex and if it is going to be a long email even at the beginning you can say i am going to write this long mail to address these 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 issues so that that will serve as a marker so that the dean can read the relevant paragraphs but there should be a paragraph wise sectioning that should happen please remember email might be shorter communication but writing a good email takes actually longer than writing everything down okay it's always true in the, as far as writing is concerned being shorter is much more difficult than being very elaborate and if you are writing to people whom you know you they are going to be very busy you should also be as concise and as precise as possible okay and then you have to sign off sign off should be done with full name please don't sign off with your nicknames and you should have a signature file uh, which lists your name your designation your group your department whatever information alternate emails if necessary so this is a, a more professional email that you would write in a technical context editors to whom you write authors to whom you write and you no know, collaborators generally it doesn't happen after a couple of mails you are you are, you are close maybe you don't need it but if you are establishing collaboration for first time or requesting somebody for some help for first time then it is better that you write like this so that people can see the mail and they can understand that you are very professional in the way you deal with these things okay the subject should be very short because there is only some n letters it shows and it should contain all the vital information you should know your recipients okay and you are you should tune your subject according to your recipients maybe it is the same talk seminar notice you are sending when you send to your group your students and when you send to the department it need not have the same subject okay depending on what you want or what action you expect you can tune so please don't send common mails to everybody okay that is another common problem that i have found please don't send common mails before sending any time you send a mail to more than 3 or 4 people you have to think if whether it is essential whether there is a way to split it in smaller groups and send the mail in smaller groups or whether everybody needs to know all this information okay this can avoid lots of trouble if you can do it professional okay and uh, never leave the subject blank and uh, if you are forwarding sometimes it is better to change the format because it has come after 15 forwards so in the subject all i can see is fwd 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 okay please edit it make it easier for the other person to follow what the mail is about okay address as dear so and so again i have a different opinion lots of people write respected the so and so and you know please don't do any of that uh, generally it is not expected that's what i'm telling you should also know when to be conservative in what way to be conservative to call somebody respected goes beyond being conservative and that is you know at some level i think that is degrading i mean professor is a professor what is respected about my at best he is respected for some of his ideas and maybe a couple of papers so i don't think because of that everybody has to address uh, professor all the time as respected and this is true for dean director whoever it is dear director you can write dear professor so and so you can write a respected director is not needed 
that is you know more respect than is necessary okay in my opinion um, because it is still professional you call somebody dear director i am writing this mail to complain about this that is a done don't need it okay and uh, okay so the the colon we have discussed and uh, never write professional mails just dear or just dear mr okay it's a slang to call somebody as just dear mr okay please don't address anybody and uh, you, if you don't know the person's name address with the person's position call dear assistant registrar okay it's okay if you know his name you can say dear dr varma that is different but just don't leave it at dear mr okay and uh, yeah so respected esteemed and all please avoid it's not really required in professional context okay so when the gender of the reader is not known right. how to address him or her dear madam slash sir but actually uh, again please don't mistake me because we've been uh, 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 training students on business english certificate so in which uh, we are not supposed to use dear sir or ma'am then what do you do so but actually we, we, nobody is giving a very clear answer for this address non gender specific terms are okay dear professor for example doesn't say whether the professor is uh, man or woman okay dear doctor is okay if you don't know okay it is always okay to write dear madam slash sir for example you might write to a journal the copy editor has sent some corrections to your english okay. you don't know whether the copy editor is so you write dear madam slash sir okay thank okay. you dear editor is okay or dear copy editor is okay if at all you have to address you can write madam slash sir nothing wrong with that okay so finish with regards best regards sincerely best wishes thanking you looking forward to hearing from you can use whatever you want sign off with full name and uh, you know sometimes there is also a cultural thing sometimes people sign off if you sign off with your nickname for example if i sign off a mail to somebody as a guru then that is just an indication to the other person that i am okay being called guru okay sometimes in that context it might mean that if i sign off as guru rajan i am telling the other person that i want to be addressed as guru rajan okay so but that is very very context specific that doesn't happen for example you might uh, write a letter to the journal editor whether you sign off as guru or guru rajan he is going to look up your name as it is in the paper and that is how he or she is going to address you okay but in some other context you know you are contacting some professor maybe a couple of mails have been exchanged if you consistently sign off with a nickname then the person will think that that is how he or she would like you to address that is how they will read this information by the same token most of the times they also expect that if they have signed off saying peter they expect you to say dear peter okay now personally i never do that unless i am explicitly told that please don't address me as this address me as this okay but convention you know allows you this freedom that if you want you can address like that uh, but that is a personal decision i generally don't do unless i am explicitly told that you know please address me like this and similarly i also write to people if i think that they should not be addressing like this i write saying that please address me as this now after somebody tells you please address me like this not addressing them with that is also wrong that is also considered as impolite if somebody tells please call me peter if you keep calling them as professor urhis then you are disrespecting the person this is again a cultural thing if, if they tell you so it is better for you to be on the safer side okay but if you are told to do this please do it don't have any hesitation okay not doing that is not going to get you any brownie points and there is no brownie points to get in this case either okay if somebody tells you are trying to collaborate you are trying to interact you have to exchange four mails and says okay please call me this please switch from next mail onwards to that address okay when you meet in person you might even adjust how you address but that is a different issue 
Um, and I generally don't like people who sign off with uh, uh, titles. You know, some people sign off. Sign off as Dr. Guru Raj. Again, I don't like it because it has that connotation. When you say, when you sign off a letter saying Dr. Guru Rajan, you are basically demanding that the receiver call you always as Dr. Guru Raj. Okay? So please don't do that. If you have anything like a doctor, you put it below in your affiliation. Whatever, you know, professor, uh, distinguished professor, fellow of this society, that society, everything can go in the signature. When you sign off, you should sign off just with your name. Okay? And please don't have in your formal sign off quotes or jokes or you know things like that. They, they are okay for other email exchange, but in your formal email exchange, you should not have anything of that sort. Okay, so most email programs allow you to have a signature file. You should generate a good one and you should keep it and it should be updated. You know, sometimes you send a mail, they might want to contact you and if there is a phone number there, it had better be operating. It should not, I should not get a message that, you know, this number does not exist or something, okay? So, please give postal address, phone numbers, alternate email addresses. Sometimes people try to respond and if email is not reaching, it is bouncing. If there is an alternate email, if that information is there, then they can work with it, okay? And any other information you might think is relevant should be there. Okay. Again, this is something that we have already discussed partly. Uh, always start your mail by greeting or introducing yourself. If it is delayed, please write, I am sorry for the delay in writing to you. Or write, I am so and so, I am writing in this capacity. Okay. And uh, or, or if you are writing in some other capacity, please let the people know that that is the capacity in which you are writing this mail. Okay. Uh, so, so for everything, you should start a new idea, you should start a different paragraph and these kind of markers you are writing for what should be part of it again to avoid how it is being read. Okay. Uh, so, so the, they basically uh, do the job of tonal cues. I mean, uh, polite people behave in some manner. So, email also has its own politeness indicators. Okay. The, I'm, all that I am saying is that please follow them. It might look over polite to you, but it is okay than to sound impolite. Okay? Um, so, 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 because of this, never write all capitals. Okay? Uh, writing all capitals on online uh, communication forum means that you are shouting. Okay? Please do not do that. Never. Okay? Uh, there, there are much more uh, better ways of saying things forcefully than shouting. Okay? One of them is to say that I am extremely unhappy and I am writing this letter to complain. I mean, that has a much more of a impact than in all caps that what did you do, okay? Okay. So, and do not use any unexplained abbreviations. It might be common in the circles in which you work. It is not necessary that it is known to everybody. And this happens even in, for example, in the hostel, we might say something for some place. But the dean does not know that that is commonly called that. So, it is better to expand the abbreviations when you are writing. So, depending on context, you should know what not to abbreviate. And please never send any mail with spelling errors. Always do a spell check. And the auto spellers and completions are very dangerous. Okay? After you write the mail, please always read once before you say send. And even when you send, there are um, uh, email programs which allow you to have an option of taking it back. About a minute or so, for example, Google allows. Please switch on that facility. Okay? Sometimes you hit send, then you realize something is wrong. I received a mail last week saying, Dear Professor Preeta Pant, I am also trying to contact Professor Guru Rajan. Can you be there at that time? Okay. Okay, so, person is using the same template. So, I wrote to him saying that I am assuming that you are trying to address Professor Guru Rajan. If so, this is my answer. Okay? So, please do not do that. I mean, uh, so, no single MOS writing. Okay? Paragraph structure is important. Punctuations are important. And email structure is important. Okay? Leave enough space between address, with regards, signing, signature, everything. Okay? So, it is always a good idea, especially if you are angry, not to send a mail immediately. Especially if you are angry, it is a very good idea to send the mail through two or three people before sending. 
Okay. There are uh, some couple of really nasty mails from which I was saved because my seniors told me that yeah, this mail reads very nice. Uh, now delete the draft and go home. <laughs> Good advice. Okay. Uh, just because we have a mean of a means of communicating something, we don't have to communicate. And I think when we are angry, when we are upset, uh, especially in the technical things, you know. A paper is rejected and you think it is unfairly rejected, it's very easy to write a nasty mail and regret it for the rest of your life. Please don't do it. Okay? You should, I mean, if you think it is unfair, you should fight it. But you should fight with dignity and without losing your cool. It's okay after one week if you are still convinced that you want to write this mail, send it. But reading that mail, people should understand your anger as well as how much Dignified you are in your tone, how much you are holding back. That is what gives impact, not the shouting. Okay? So, switch on the retract email option. If possible, compose elsewhere, cut and paste, and then send. Uh, it's always a good idea to have somebody read. Okay? And never send a mail when you are angry, upset, or in a hurry. Okay? Um, these are prescriptions for mistakes. Okay? Now, this is another thing which you should be very careful. Uh, uh, so, so, email IDs, especially the professional ones that you have, should be considered like your credit card or one-time password, whatever. So, please don't share it with anybody uh, and uh, don't play pranks with emails. Okay? And they are legal documents, by the way. At least at IIT, they are legal documents. Anything that I write in an email is equivalent to my writing it on a piece of paper and signing. That is why the password, I can't say somebody else has taken it. That will not be considered as forgery. Okay? If somebody has taken my email and sent it, it's, it's my problem. Unless I can prove criminal intent that I didn't give that person a hack. Okay? Okay. So now, there are some more email etiquette points that I want to... Be prompt in your replies. Be simple, direct, and short. Do not sign up for messages. So there is some uh, some queue box, some mailbox. I don't know what it is. There are people who sign up for such services, which unnecessarily flood the email boxes of the people who send you mails. Okay, be careful. I mean, you sign up for them, but not with your professional account. The 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 professional account you use for sending mails to editors and your collaborators and your dean. Please keep them away from these kind of services. You don't need any of those services for them, okay? And uh, uh, and uh, there are also email services which will look up your uh, um, address book and send. And uh, sometimes they send you know generalized uh, uh, email and, and address in a very unprofessional manner and and not very pleasant. Okay, people can get upset if it happens. Okay. So, so people, you know, will uh, will ban you uh, from sending them mails. It can happen, and not for your mistake. I mean, just because some stupidity of this sort uh, that can get you in trouble. So please don't. And uh, email communication also means it is very fast, which also means that people do expect replies within some time frame. Okay, if there is going to be a delay, you know, you are working on it, you want to reply after a week. Immediately for acknowledgement, send a mail saying that yes, I have received. It will take so much of time for me to respond, and keep the time. Okay, and uh, once you say I'll do it, you should do it within the timeline. And you have to be extremely careful with attachments, unless you know people very well, and unless you know that they are okay with the attachment, don't send huge attachments. And uh, you know some people also have a tendency to click send. Oh, it's not going send. Then I get four mails with a huge attachment in my mailbox. And of course, next day I'm going to shout at that student. Okay, please don't do that. Uh, and use emails sparingly and professionally. In the professional context, again, I'm not talking about other emails that you write. In the professional context, for example, just because you have an email does not mean that you will write every two, uh, once in two months to the editor about the review of your paper. Please don't do. Okay. Uh, the reminder mails are different and they have to be written in some fashion, so it takes some time. If you want to write, you should take that time and write in that manner. Okay? There are very tough emails that all of us have to write time to time. 
Okay, one uh, scenario that I can think of is your paper got a nasty review and you are not happy about the review. How will you write a polite but proper mail that the editor cannot take offense about the way you have complained but will consider your complaint? Okay, one. So conducting a conference, you have rejected a paper and the author of the paper has written you a nasty mail. Okay, you want to say no but you want to say it politely and you want to say it firmly okay and you can also you might also want to say that you don't appreciate this tone in the mail now how do you say all this politely okay okay so you want to go for a conference the registration fee is too high you want to ask for a fee waiver how to ask for it okay so, you have met some researchers in the conference where you went and it is always a good thing to keep contacts and the way to do is to send a mail after you come back. But again, these mails have to be written very, very professionally. So that the person who receives the mail would like to keep in touch with you and would not see you as somebody who is bothering. Okay? How do you do this? How do you do without Overt signaling means you know you are trying to latch on to the person or you are trying to extract something out of the person. So, the person who is receiving the mail should not get that feeling uh, and that is where you know dear respected professor kind of things actually backfires against you, you should not write. You met the professor in the conference and then you write this extra humble letter can put off people. Okay? So, you do not want to do that either, you want to be very professional, you want to sound very professional. But your aim is to keep in touch with the professor. How do you do that? Okay. So, I wanted to actually, like Suntar did, wanted to do some exercise, read some random mails and then try to give a comment. Um, unfortunately, it would not be possible now, but in the December session, we will do some of it and in the online session also, we will do some of it. Okay. Okay. So, I think time for coffee and then we will have discussion over coffee if there are.